Today, I'm going to show you how to place a logo behind a person in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be super quick and helpful for those of you guys who want to put a logo behind a person in Photoshop. This can be great for a quick ad or for some layout. You see it a lot on magazines. Like oftentimes you'll have a person's face and you'll have like Vogue right behind them, but they're covering up the letters from the actual magazine. So in today's episode, we're going to show you a quick way to cut your subject out and then place the logo behind your subject. We're also going to show you how to use the new content aware crop tool to extend the frame in Photoshop and show you how to give a little bit of space between your subject and your logo. All right, guys, it's going to be a great episode. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop. All right, guys, here's our image for today. And we've got our subject on a relatively clean background. So we're going to be cutting him out and placing the logo right behind our subject. So in order to do that, we're going to grab our logo. Now, in this case, I'm using this logo. It says Surf Club, Long Beach, California. Obviously, you whether you're going to be working for yourself, you can put your own brand or your own logo behind a subject, or if you're working for a client, you can work on their logo. In this case, we're just kind of using something pretty generic here, but you're going to get the idea. Okay, so here's our Surf Club Long Beach. We're going to grab our Move tool here, and I'm going to click and drag from one document to another, and here we have our logo now on our uh, new background. So I'm going to hit F for full screen, and I want to place this over here to the right. I, Sometimes it can be really nice to just have part of your logo covered up by your subject. That way it just kind of integrates a little bit more interestingly. Now in this case, we don't, we're not able to actually fit our logo in this document. So what I'm going to do is we're going to be using the content aware crop tool to actually extend my border. So to start off, I want to make this layer invisible. Okay. And then my background layer, you can see how it has a lock right there. Okay. That means I'm not going to be able to use my content aware crop tool as is. So we're going to double click right here on our background layer, anywhere here in the gray, just double click right there. And it's going to say convert to a new layer. It's going to call it layer zero, or you can type in your own name there. Okay. And hit okay. You can see when I did that, the lock disappears. And now instead of calling this background, it just says layer zero. Okay. So now we're going to grab our crop tool. You can hit C for the crop tool or simply click right here. Okay. And then here at the very top, we want to make sure our delete crop pixels, we want to make sure that is unchecked. And then just to the right of that, we're going to see content aware. Now, this is a new feature just released within Adobe Photoshop CC 2015 version 5.0. So if you guys don't have the most current version, I'll show you how to do this using older versions as well. But if you do have the current version, just check on content aware and you can simply click here and drag out to the right and hit that little checkbox there. Now, basically what it does is it recrops our image and extends our image out using the content aware crop feature, which I think is just really, really cool. Now, let's go ahead and show you guys how to do this if you don't have content aware. So content aware crop, which is the newest version. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. Now let's use our regular crop tool. Let's say we don't have content aware crop available. So just simply click here and drag out to the right, just like we did before. Now, in this case, it's not going to fill anything over here on the right side of the image because we don't have content aware. So let's go ahead and show you how to use the regular content aware fill tool to fill in that gap. So to fill in this gap using the regular content aware fill, first, we're going to make a selection. We're going to go to our rectangular marquee tool. Now we're going to go ahead and make a selection right around our transparent area. And I'm making sure to include a little bit of our background. So it's going to know what's actually pull from. Okay. Now we're going to go to edit down to fill. Okay. And here where we have options for our content, here's what you can choose your foreground, background color, black, gray, or white. We're going to choose content aware, make sure color adaptation is checked and just hit okay there. All right. And it's going to think about what it's actually going to fill with. And there we go. You can see basically filled in the same thing. So with newer versions of Photoshop CC 2015, they build content aware right into the crop tool. But if you don't have that, no big deal. You can just use the regular content aware fill tool within Photoshop. Okay. So now we're ready. We've got our logo here and you can see we do have enough room for our logo. So we're good to go. Now let's go ahead and cut our subject out. 
So when you're cutting your subject out, there are many different ways to do this. If your subject's on a simple background, like in this case, we can use a tool like the Magic Wand tool, which is quick and easy to use. If your subject is on a more complex background, you may need to use the pen tool to cut them out. And we have great free episodes on using the pen tool as well. Just go to flurn.com. In the search bar, just type in pen tool and you'll see a bunch of free episodes on the pen tool. Now, in this case, we're going to use a simpler method for cutting our subject out of the background. All right, let's jump in and show you how to do it. So we're going to start off by making our logo invisible and clicking on our background layer. Now, in this case, I'm going to go right over here to our magic wand tool. It's located right below your quick selection tool. So the magic wand tool. Now, basically, we're just going to click on our background here, and this is the area that's going to get selected. Now, if you want to make your selection a little bit larger, just hold the shift key down, and you can see we have the magic wand with a little plus icon next to it now. And this is going to increase my selection. Every time I click, it's going to add that area to my selection. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to click right under here, Okay, and over here on the left side of my subject as well. There we go. So now we have a selection, there we go, right around our subject. So with that selection, we're gonna go ahead and make our layer visible, okay? And we're gonna load the selection as a layer mask. So to do so, simply click here on your layer mask icon. It looks like a square with a circle inside of it. So click there, and now we've got our selection loaded as a layer mask, which is exactly what we wanna do. That's the whole point of this episode. Now, we're going to take it one step further. In this case, we've got our layer here, and we've got our layer mask. You can hold Alt or Option on your layer mask and see that's what our layer mask actually looks like. Okay, definitely looks pretty good there. Now, between those, you're going to see a chain link. So what I suggest doing is clicking on that chain link. It's going to unlink your layer and your layer mask. So if they're linked together, like they are right now, because I went ahead and linked them back together. If you see the chain link, it means they're linked together. Okay. If I move my layer, you're going to see my layer and my layer mask are moving together. Okay. So as soon as I move it away from his arm there, you're going to see the outline of his arm is still there. So if you wanted to do something like that, you could definitely just kind of like offset it a little bit and kind of get a little bit of an outline there, which is cool. Now, what I suggest doing is unlinking your layer and your layer mask. So we're going to click there and you can see they're unlinked now. Now I can click on just my layer and move just my layer around. And because my layer mask is staying in the same place, I can move this anywhere I want. And you're going to see it's going to basically just maintain the area where my subject is selected. Now, when I use my magic wand tool, I didn't select the ocean. So you can see the ocean is part of the area that didn't get selected. So if you need to change your selection at any time, simply click on your layer mask. Okay, and you can just use your marquee tool. In this case, I'll just grab my rectangular marquee tool. We'll just make a selection right down there. All right, just like that. And then I'll just fill this area with white on my layer mask. So we'll go to edit, down to fill, and we'll go over here to white. So we're filling my layer mask in this area with white, which is gonna make it visible. And there you can see Long Beach, California is now visible there. So I think this is a really cool way to do it because if you move your layer around, again, you can kind of position it exactly where you want to and your layer mask is gonna stay in the exact same place. All right, we're almost there. In this case, I think that looks really cool. Now, I also wanna make our text white instead of this uh, dark color. So clicking on our layer, I'm gonna hit Controller Command L for levels. Okay, you can also go to image adjustment and levels. And now I'm gonna take my output levels and just take this and slide from the left to the right. And it's basically gonna take the darkest part of our image and make it lighter. In this case, it's taking that dark gray and it's making it lighter. And I'm gonna go all the way there and it's gonna go ahead and make that white. So let's hit okay. All right, cool. And here we can see our logo behind our subject in Photoshop and you can go all, all over the place if you want to. But in this case, I think the, that looks really good. It's still totally legible and it's a little bit more integrated. There we go, let's bring it up just a little bit. It's totally integrated with our photo. All right guys, and that's all there is to today's episode. If you wanna do this yourself, just follow these key steps. We started off today's episode by stretching our image out. Now, if you're using the most current version of Photoshop, that's CC 2015 version 5.0, you can simply grab your crop tool, click on content aware, and stretch your image out. The content aware crop tool is gonna to do the rest of the work for you. If you're using an older version, simply crop your image out, select the area you want to fill with the marquee tool, and then go to edit, 
down to fill and over to content aware fill. It's going to fill in your selection with area from your photo, making it look like it extends the border of your image. Next, we use the magic wand tool to make a selection around the background of our photo. Once our selection is active, we go ahead and click on the layer mask icon for our logo. Now, my suggestion is to unlink the layer and the layer mask. That way you can move around the layer independent from the layer mask and get the best position possible. And to finish it off, we turned our logo from gray to white using a simple levels adjustment layer. Just simply hit Control or Command L and bring your output level, the dark slider, from the left all the way to the right. Guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed learning how to place a logo behind your subject in Photoshop. If you love Photoshop as much as I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or comment about today's episode, simply leave it in a comment box right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Um, all right, guys, so here's... Let's get a fill your photo in with images.